Hello and welcome back to Start Learning Numbers. And first, as always, I want to thank all the nice people that support me on Steady or PayPal. In today's part 11, we will finish our discussion about the rational numbers by talking about the ordering. Please recall, the set Q is given by all possible fractions and we would visualize the rational numbers on the number line. However, in order to do that, we actually need an ordering as we had it for the integers. For example, how do we know that we have one half here and one quarter to the left of it? And where exactly do we have one third then? Of course, if we think of ratios, one quarter should be less than one third. However, this less or equal sign here, we first have to define. And that is exactly the thing we want to do in this video today. First, let's recall how the ordering was defined for the integers. Indeed, it's completely the same definition we had for the natural numbers. Hence, a is less or equal than b, if there exists a k in n0, such that a plus k is equal to b. Of course, this makes sense because adding positive numbers means we jump to the right. Okay, now we can use this to define that one quarter is indeed less or equal than one third. This should hold because three is less or equal than four. Please note, here we have the ordering for the integers and here we have the new ordering for rational numbers. And this idea we now can put into a general definition. For this, let's take two arbitrary fractions a over b and c over d. Then our new inequality should be defined by the old one just by multiplying with the denominators. This makes totally sense when you think of comparing ratios as here. However, it would break when we have negative numbers in the denominator. Of course, since we calculate with equivalence classes when we talk about fractions, we can just exclude these cases. And indeed what we get is an ordering for all rational numbers that fits with the number line here. Okay, I don't think we have to do all the proofs here, but I should tell you about all the important properties this ordering has. First of all, it's a well-defined ordering, which means it's reflexive, antisymmetric and transitive. And the second property tells us that the ordering respects the addition. More concretely, if we have x is less or equal than y, we can just add a new rational number on both sides. And this does not change the ordering. So this is a nice property we have for all rational numbers x, y and z. Therefore the next question would be, do we have the same for the multiplication? In fact we can write down the property in the same sense. If x is less or equal than y, we can multiply with a rational number on both sides and we don't change the ordering. However, this only holds if z is positive, otherwise we would flip the ordering. So this is the property that tells us that the ordering and the multiplication are compatible. Now I should also tell you that we use the sign in the flipped sense as well and then we read it from right to left, here and here for example. This is just very common and then we would read it as greater or equal. And when we want to exclude the equality, we would write it without the line. Okay, now we have two more properties we really should talk about. First we have a so-called total order, which means whenever we have two numbers we can always compare them. So if we have x and y, we should have x is less or equal than y or y is less or equal than x. Of course this makes sense if we think of the number line, but please note this property is not included in the ordering in the first part. However if we take the anti-symmetric property in here, it tells us that for different x and y we have either that or that. Okay, now the fifth property here is the so-called Archimedean property. Also this one fits in with our picture of the number line. It tells you that if you take any rational number on the number line, you can just start with zero and a small step and just adding to exceed this point. So there is no number that is larger than all the other numbers. And also there is no step size that is so small that adding is not enough to reach a given number. So in other words, no infinitely large or infinitely small elements. Okay, so let's take positive rational numbers x and epsilon. 
Now the idea is that we add epsilon as often as we want and at some point we will exceed x. Of course for this whole sum we can just use our short notation with the multiplication with a natural number n. Okay, with this you now have all the important properties of the rational numbers. They form a so-called field and they have an ordering with these properties. And now to get to the real numbers, we just have to add one additional property. But of course, this is what we will do in the next videos. Therefore, I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.